W. Fitch Company, makers of Fitch Shampoo, presents the Fitch Fan Wagon with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Ruth, Ann Whitfield, Robert North, Walter Scarf and his music, and starring Alice Bay and Phil Harris. Forty-two prizes each week for you. Just tell why you like Fitch Shampoo. To introduce Fitch's new cream shampoo, and for those who use dandruff remover shampoo, we're sponsoring our second big weekly contest. Prizes include... One new Fraser Manhattan four-door sedan. One new Kaiser sedan. Five universal electric ranges. Three Amana home freezers. Two Voss electric washing machines. 30 universal electric blankets. It's easy to enter, easy to win. Get paper and pencil ready. We'll give contest rules and the address now and repeat them again later in the program. Here's all you do. In 25 additional words or less, complete one of these statements. I like Fitch's cream shampoo because... Or, I like Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo because... That's all. Attach entry to carton top from Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo or round seal under jar lid of Fitch's cream shampoo, or facsimile. Mail with your name and address to Fitch Shampoo, Box 1723, Chicago, Illinois. There's plenty to write about. Fitch's cream shampoo leaves hair far softer, shinier. That's because it's made with both lanolin and olive oil. Lanolin to soften, olive oil to bring out those sparkling highlights. Forty-two prizes each week for you. Just tell why you like Fitch Shampoo. Last Monday, a decision was reached at a board of directors meeting of the F.W. Fitch Company, which was to have a decided effect on the lives of Phil Harris and Alice Fay. Therefore, let's go back to Monday in that board of directors meeting in Des Moines, Iowa, where Mr. F.W. Fitch is speaking. And so, gentlemen, it has been decided that Phil Harris has been doing a splendid job on our radio show. And as a reward, we're making him a stockholder in our company. Is everyone agreed? Check, F.W. I agree, F.W. You have my vote, F.W. What do you say, J.R.? What? What's that? Uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> Why don't you pay attention? What are you writing, anyway? Well, I can win a Kaiser Fraser car if I finish this sentence. I like Fitch Cream Shampoo because... Well, how many times must I tell you you can't enter our own contest? Oh. How do you feel about making Harris a stockholder? It's, well, frankly, S.W., I, I do not think that Phil Harris belongs in our company. He is not our type of person. It's... In fact, I don't know why we hired him for our program in the first place. They hired him for three good reasons. He's a comedian, he's a musician, and it was the only way we could get Alice Faye. <laughs> <laughs> but, F.W., remember that this is a closed corporation, and we stockholders are all gentlemen. Do we want a man as crude as this Harris to be a stockholder and have a voice in our affairs? Oh, relax, J.R., how much damage can he do with one lousy share? <laughs> S.W., your language. You, well, well, perhaps we ought to keep this stock in trust. He might even sell it to an outsider. Quiet, J.R., you've been outvoted. We are sending Mr. Harris one share of stock worth $14.62. I'll advise him of that immediately. Miss Martin, take a telegram. He goes to Bill Harris and Chino, California. And now we take you to the Harris home on that same Monday morning. Alice, Phil, and the children are at breakfast, and Phil is telling the children a story. And so, kids, the little princess found herself in the frozen north surrounded by wolves. What happened, Daddy? Did the princess get eaten by the wolves? Phyllis, there's no such word as eaten. Besides, you don't have to worry. The princess wasn't that up by the wall. <laughs> now, let's try it with eight up, huh? Then what happened to the princess, Daddy? Well, when the wolves got close, she jumped on her dog's sled, cracked the whip, and yelled, Holly ho The dogs didn't move. They just turned and sneered in her face. Daddy, 
The word is mush. All right, they sneered in her mush. <laughs> Alice, tell the kids to stop correcting me. But, Phil, you were wrong. Well, I don't care. Tell the kids they shouldn't ought to do it. It ain't nice. <laughs> All right. Kids, it ain't nice, and you shouldn't ought to do it. <laughs> Phil, let the children eat their breakfast. Is anybody home? Oh, it's my brother. We're in here, William. Hello, Alice. Good morning, Philip. Oh, isn't it a lovely day? <laughs> Everything is right with the world. Well, little orphan Annie is here again. <laughs> Sit down and be quiet, will you? I'm telling the kids a story. Oh, my. Alice, why do you allow Philip to tell the children stories? His choice of language is atrocious. And besides, he doesn't know how to tell a story correctly. Who doesn't? Why, I got the smoothest delivery in show business. Why do you think I got two radio shows? You're wondering, too, hmm? <laughs> Alice, tell this guy why I got two radio shows. Well, it's obvious, William. Phil has two shows because he has... Phil, what was it you told me you had on Mr. Benny and Mr. Fitz? Well, <laughs> will you... <laughs> Cut out the kid, and I'm on the Benny show because he needs me. He needs you? Oh, come now, Phil. You're nothing but a lowly stooge on that program. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't go calling me no stooge. And especially in front of my children. They think I'm the funniest one on the Benny show, don't you, kid? You certainly do, Daddy. Especially when you pick up the phone and say, Hello, boss, this is Rochester. <laughs> I don't play that part. Oh, then you must be the man who goes, oh! No, I'm not F.E. Boone either. <laughs> you see, Philip, even your children are confused, which proves how precarious your position is in show business. See if the public ever becomes aware of your lack of talent, where will you be? What will you do? You're, you're a little too old to turn to anything else. <laughs> William, Phil is not old. He's still young and good-looking. Thanks, honey, but you don't have to say it just because it's obvious. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious, Phyllis. If you were to leave show business, what else would you do? You're certainly not mentally equipped for the business world. Oh, wait. <laughs> if I wasn't an entertainer, there are lots of things I could be. With my, my brains, I could be a... Uh, or I could be... Uh, well, and then again, I could be, uh, uh... And that's only three of the things you could be. <laughs> you, you see, Philip, you'd be lost completely. Wait lost. a minute, I'll answer it, Alice. Anything to get away from this pen and pencil set. <laughs> Thinks I'm a stew. Thinks I haven't got enough brains to make a lot of money. If that long shot comes in today, I'll show him. <laughs> I have a telegram for Phil Harris. I'm Harris. Here, kid, thanks. I wonder who could be sending me a telegram. Let me see. We are happy to inform you that we are making you a stockholder in the Fitch Company. Oh, me a stockholder in a big company? Wait a minute. The stock will be sent within a fortnight, signed F.W. Fitch. Hey, yeah, and I'm getting it in a fortnight. Ain't that terrific? Wait a minute. How long is a fortnight? P.S. It's two weeks, you dope. <laughs> oh, you listen to that? You listen. I thought it was nine days. Oh, look. Oh, gee, this stock really puts me and Alice in the money. And what I can do with that money, oh, I'll really spread it around. Because I'm a fellow with a heart of gold in the ways of a gentleman. I've been told the kind of a guy that wouldn't even harm a flea. But if me and a certain character meant that guy that invented the cigarette, I'd murder that son of a gun in the first degree. Now, not because I don't smoke myself, and I don't reckon they'll harm your health. I've smoked all my life and ain't dead yet. But nicotine slaves are all the same at a pet party or a poker game. Everything but stop while they smoke that cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death, tell St. Peter the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait, but you just got to have another cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Mm. Puff, puff, puff. Mm. Now, the other night, I had a date with the cutest little girl in 48 states, a high-bred uptown fancy little dame. She said she loved me, and it seemed to me that things were about like they ought to be, so hand in hand, we strolled down Lover's Lane. 
it was oh so far from a cake of ice, my smooching party was going nice, so help me, Hannah, I think I'd been there yet. I'd have been there yet. But I give her a kiss and a little squeeze, she said, Philip, excuse me, please, but I've just got to have another cigarette. Another cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death, tell St. Peter's the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait, but you just got to have another cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke. St. Peter, I'm sorry that I'm keeping you holding that gate open, but I just got to have another drag off of this cigarette. Thank you, Peter. Mmm, thank you. brought that on? What brought it on, Alice, honey? Listen to this telegram. I've been made a big stockholder in the Fitch Company. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it, William? Yeah, isn't it, bud? Just listen to that. <laughs> you thought I was nothing but a stooge, and now look at me. A large stockholder, an important financier, a big business mongrel. <laughs> just, just, just a moment, Philip. What makes you think it's a large block of stock? Well, after all I've done for that company, they must have given me at least a controlling interest. Now, take it easy, Phil. You don't have the stock yet. Well, I'm getting it in a day or two. They'll be wheeling that stuff in in bales. <laughs> now, from now on, honey, we're going to live. Now, look, we're going to sell this place and get a bigger house, and then we're going to... Well, wait a minute. That must be Frankie. I asked him to stop by and drive me down to the band rehearsal. I'll let him in. Oh, boy, wait till I tell Frankie about this stock. Hiya, Frankie. Come on in. Hello, Curly. Oh, come on inside and sit down. Boy, have I got news for you, kid. You're looking at a big man. I got a controlling interest in fit. How utterly thrilling. <laughs> What's a fish? <laughs> it's our sponsor, our sponsor, the people who... Look, whose name is on the check you get every week? The Bank of America. I don't even reckon for them. <laughs> Look, Frankie, I've been made a member of a big firm. They took me into the business, and I'm now a big shot. I'm important. I got a company to run. Letters to dictate to my private secretary. This one of you got a secretary. Well, I haven't got one yet, but I'm going to get one. After all, a financial wizard like me needs a menial to dispense with the trivialities that are fostered on a man in my position. <laughs> well, la de la. <laughs> You listen a minute. A man as important as I am now needs a secretary. And by the way, uh, you know any girl who'd like the job? Don't bother me. What do I know from secretary? Well, I know it's going to be a good job for somebody. I'm pretty well fixed now, and I'm going to be willing to pay about 200 bucks a week. And you see, I... Frankie, get off of my lap. <laughs> Look, Curly, hire me. I'm great at that secretary stuff. Oh, you are? How's your shorthand? It's growing, thanks. <laughs> Start dictating, hey? I'll show you how good I am. Okay, now, the first thing I want you to do is to send a letter to Jack Benny and tell him that I can no longer be just a stooge on his program. Well, wait a minute, Curly. I'll type it. Before I was a musician, I used to work in an office. Yeah? Well, are you fast on the typewriter? I never found out. I'd sit down to type, but every time I came to the end of a line, a bell would ring, and I'd go out to lunch. <laughs> I gained 20 pounds. Look, stop it. <laughs> You're hearing bells all the time. Now, look, sit down and take this letter. Okay, now look. Dear Mr. Benny, due to an important position that I have just attained in the financial world... I can no longer accept two droves on your program. And from now on, I shall have to be one of the luminaries. Got it. <laughs> you don't think you made it a little too wordy, do you, buddy? <laughs> Look, Curly, I know what I'm doing. I know what you want to tell Benny. Go away and I'll write the letter myself. Okay, Frankie, I'll let you write it. But now, don't make it too strong because Jackson's been good to me and I don't want to hurt that old man. Now, you write it. <laughs> write it and watch it and I'll be right back. Okay, sir. Hey, Alice. Hey, Alice, where are you? I'm in here in the kitchen, Phil. Look, honey, you're the wife of a big stockholder now. 
And believe me, you won't have to work in the kitchen no more Because tomorrow I'm going to hire you a whole rotten new servant well. That's right, not only that, I'm going to get you a bigger house I'm going to buy you that big red place in Beverly Hills You know that colonial place with the big wide doors and brass pillars? Bill, that's the firehouse <laughs> Well, I don't want another house. Uh oh, that must be the grocery boy. Will you let him in? Yes, I'll let him in. Silly, though, because if it's Julius or Bruzio, oh, he wouldn't want to see me anyway. The kid's sweet on you, baby. Greetings, Green Grail. I stand here before you with my <laughs> eyes closed because I fear that if I open them, I might be blinded by your dazzling beauty. <laughs> well, take a chance and open them, kid. I ain't that beautiful. <laughs> Oh, hello, Julia. See, it's good to see you again. Greetings, Green Girl. I stand here before you with my eyes closed because I fear that if I opened them, I might be blinded by your dazzling beauty. Oh, Julia, it's sweet of you to say that. Don't let it go to your head, honey. You said the same thing to me. <laughs> hey, Charlie, I finished typing your letter to Benny. It's all signed, sealed, and ready to go. Sealed? Don't you think you ought to let me read it first? Of course not. <laughs> Letter ain't addressed to you. It's addressed to Jack Bennington. <laughs> you want to do something, Curly? You can take it out and mail it. Hey, if that letter's for Mr. Benny, I'll take it. I got to deliver a bag of gums up to his house this afternoon. I'll give it to him personally. Oh, thanks, kid. Here's the letter. That's all right, Mr. Emery. Well, I got to go now. Farewell, soulmate. Farewell, Julia. <laughs> Frankie. Frankie, he's talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, what are you writing to Jack Benny about? Oh, nothing, honey. I just made a few demands now that I'm a big man. A few little things I think he ought to do. Hey, forget about it. Look, Frankie, come yeah. on. Let's get down to rehearsal. Hey, Alice, when I get downtown, I'm going to buy you a fur coat. New cars and jewelry. Now, and the... take it easy, Phil. You don't have the stock yet. But it's coming, honey. And Now, look, I want you to go out and buy some stuff for the new house. I want you to get Persian rugs, oil paintings, and, oh, we're going to live in class. Oh, naturally. And we mustn't forget to buy some solid gold plates. You're going to use solid gold plates? Yeah. What do you think? We eat like pigs? <laughs> Control yourself. Oh, stop worrying. Now, come on, Frankie. So long, honey. Goodbye, Phil. Mm, bye. Oh, that man of mine. Heaven knows what he'll bring home. My father was the same way. I remember the time he made a few extra dollars and bought a car for Mom. He burst into the house and said, Get your veil and get your duster. Get the yen for goggles when the wind's a guster. Keep your Hubbard gown firmly belted down when you're out in your Stanley steamer. In a gale, we never fluster. Cause we're told we get that old familiar luster. If you're dressed in style, everyone will pile when you're out in your Stanley steamer. Honk, 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 honk. The donkey's a heavy star. But he's looking at us with alarm For it looks like he's back to the farm But if you stay with your combustion Then your speed is gonna need a new adjuster And you must be just, just the one you trust Or we won't step inside No, we won't make the right That you plan in your family That you plan in your family the tandem bike has had its day If you're riding one, you'll find that day Hope along in an obsolete way With all the pride, 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 anticipation Like a child who has a wild imagination And we want to ride, want to ride inside Of the latest motor while I sit behind the wheel with, with the man in the family steamer With the man in the family steamer In the family steamer Oh, I hope, Phil, 
Bill doesn't go hog wild downtown and buy every... Coming! I got a telegram for Phil Harris. I'll take it. Wow, how you've changed, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Thank you very much, son. I wonder who this is from. Due to a dissenting vote in the board of directors, we have decided not to mail your stock, but to keep it in trust for you. Signed, F.W. Fitz. In trust? Oh, my goodness, that means Phil can't touch it. And he's out spending money he won't be getting. Oh, I've got to get down to that rehearsal and tell him. <laughs> Hurry up, Phil. We're late for rehearsal already. Yeah, 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 I know. Now, let's see. What have I ordered so far? Now, have you got it all marked down, Frankie? Oh, sure. You ordered six assorted fur coats for Alice. Check. <laughs> uh, eight truckloads of sand for the kid's sandbox. <laughs> and 12 pairs of yellow shoes for yourself. <laughs> Right, good. Now, look, and another thing. I'm buying Alice a new home, so remind me to run an ad putting our house up for sale. Hey, Curly, ain't you overdoing this? Don't tell me what to do, Sec. You just put it down. <laughs> hey, look, here's a rehearsal hall. Now, I can't wait to tell them guys what I'm going to do for them. Wait till you hear this. I'm going to give them all a raise because they deserve it. They're a fine bunch of gentlemen, so open that door, Frankie. <laughs> Hey, Frankie, Frankie, uh, tell the gentleman to be quiet. Yeah, please. all right. Quiet, you mug. Right down. Break it up! <laughs> That's better. <laughs> the podium is yours, Maestro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> gentlemen, as your podium, I got a few words to say. Hey, Artie, will you pay attention when I'm talking to you? What are you doing? I'm writing. I entered a contract. All I gotta do is tell why I like fit standard remover shampoo and 25 words. You don't know 25 words. <laughs> well, when you get back and pay attention, I'm Phil, gonna... Phil, Phil, I want to talk to you. It's very important. Oh, hello, honey. Well, what are you doing here? Yeah, what's up, Alice? Phil, you just got another telegram from the fish company. They're not sending you the stock. They're holding it in trust for you. Ain't that wonderful? They trust me. <laughs> well, you don't understand, Phil. That means you won't be able to touch the stock. They're holding it for you. Oh. Oh. You mean I ain't going to be able to get my hands on the money right away? Oh, but gee, honey, how about all those nice things that I just ordered? Oh, well, you can cancel all that, but I hope you didn't offend Mr. Benny in that letter because you need that job. No. <laughs> I didn't say anything to offend Jackson. You can ask Frankie. He typed a letter. All I said was that, you know, that I just wanted to be one of the show's luminaries. <laughs> that ain't what you said, Curly. <laughs> what do you mean? I couldn't spell luminary, so I told him you quit. <laughs> oh, my quit. Frankie, how could you do such a thing to me? I can't quit, Jackson. Yeah. Well, oh. maybe it isn't too late. Maybe Julius hasn't delivered the letter Well, yet. we better get over that market and see if Julius is still there or not. Come on, Ramley, you schnook. <laughs> oh, hurry up, Alice. I'm afraid we're late anyway. I don't see Julius anywhere. Oh, he must be store. somewhere. At... Oh, there he is, over there. You better let me talk to him, Phil. You only upset him. Julius. Miss Faye! Oh, thank goodness you're here. I rushed over to see you. At last you have come to me, fair one. Let us fly away together. Date her later, will you? <laughs> Let us fly. That's right. Where's that letter to Benny? Now, where's the letter? Take your mitt off of me. The letter's been delivered. Oh, no. No. Oh, Alice, I'm a ruined man. Well, let's get home. I gotta try and call Jackson and the... You're a schnook, <laughs> Oh, 
Alice. I've got to call Jack, but I'm afraid. Oh, Daddy, you're home just in time. Mr. Benny is on the phone. He is? Uh, wh- well, what does he want, Phyllis? He wants to talk to Miss Encino. Oh, all right, honey. Get him on the phone. <laughs> well, I got one chance. I got to try, try and just try and bluff my way out of this. Hiya, Jackson. How's the sweetest little guy in the whole world? Old television prospect. Hiya, Jackson. Oh, you... Huh? Oh, you got my letter, huh? But, yeah, I know, but, uh... Yeah. Yeah, all I said was I quit. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah I quit, but I, oh, I didn't mean it, Jackson. Please. Hey, Jackson, can I have my job back? I didn't mean it, Jack. Of course, Mr. Benny. <laughs> yes, master. <laughs> Thank you, most exalted one. <laughs> Goodbye. Boy, it took brains to get out of that one. <laughs> well, honey, I had to take a cut in salary, but I got my job back. <laughs> well, thank goodness. But tell me, Phil, why did you keep telling Jack the letter said you quit? I had to. Frankie's typing was so bad he couldn't read a word. <laughs> Two prizes each week for you. Just tell why you like this shampoo. Look, this is Phil Harris, folks. Remember, our second contest closes Saturday night, midnight, October the 18th. So enter tonight. Now, look, here's all you do. In 25 additional words or less, complete one of these statements. I like Fitch's cream shampoo because... Or, I like Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo because... Mail entry with your name and address to Fitch Shampoo, Box 1723, Chicago. That's Fit Shampoo, Box 1723, Chicago, Illinois. Send any number of entries, each on a plain sheet of paper. To each, attach round seal under jar lid of Fitch's Cream Shampoo or carton top from Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo or facsimile. This week's prizes include... One Fraser Manhattan sedan, one Kaiser sedan, five Universal Electric ranges, three Amana home freezers, two Voss Electric washing machines, 30 Universal Electric blankets. Entries judged on originality, sincerity, and aptness of thought. Duplicate prizes for ties, judges' decisions final. Any person in the United States or Canada may enter except employees of Fitch, their advertising agency, and families. Entries received after Saturday midnight, judged in following week's contest. First car winners announced on this program next Sunday. (laughs) Tune in next week when the F.W. Fitch Company again brings you the Fitch Bandwagon with Alice Fay and Phil Harris. This program was written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast, were Francis X. Bushman, Gil Stratton, Ollie O'Toole, and Bob Jellison. Alice Fay appears with the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Good night, everybody. Look, this is Phil Harris again. Remember, folks, there are three big contests left. Now, you can enter each week for those big weekly prizes. Don't be a Remley. Do it tonight. Uh-huh. Laugh a while that a song be your style, you bitch. Try Fitch's Cream Shampoo. Enter second contest before Saturday midnight. Win a Fraser Manhattan or Kaiser Sedan. Bill Foreman speaking.